record on this computer. Let's go. All right, people, what's good? What's good? What's good? This is for the lag of God. And today we are joined by multi-talented singer, songwriter, music producer, Kenny J. What's good, Kenny? What's happening, my brother? How's it going with you, bro? It's going very well, thank you. It's going very cool. well. It's, uh, cool, cool, it's an cool, honor. Cool, cool. It's an honor to have you here, mate. It's an honor to it's, have you here. It's an honor to be here for sure. Stop it! Stop it! You're too <laughs> kind. You're too <laughs> kind. <laughs> um. All right. So let's jump into it. Let's jump yeah. into it. So, in your own words, who is Kenny J? Ah, uh, quite simple. I am a father of three children. Um, I'm a survivor. I am uh, a lover of people. Um, I love music. I don't know where my life would be without it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, that's, they talk about love languages. Music is a love language of mine that I cannot let go. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. I am just a guy that's trying to make a mark in the world to make the world better through my gift of music. I like yeah. that. Trying to make the world better through music. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's something. Mm -hmm. Something that lies uh, lies quite dear dear with me and and starting this channel. So yeah, I like mm -hmm. I, man, I, li I like that answer. I like that yeah, answer. I appreciate it. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, mate. You're welcome. It's good to it's good to know. A very very versatile person. Very versatile yeah. person. Entrepreneur, just, survivor, yep. lover, mm -hmm. someone making it. Oh, mate, all round. Yeah, all of that. All round. Mm -hmm. Healed, it. healed individual trying to help assist the world with being healed. Uh, the lag of God, uh, God is being the love of everybody needs just love. It's important that we got to put that out in the world, in the earth. It needs it. It needs it badly. And uh, that's the only way it's going to get better is, yep. you know, we have to change it. It's not anything in the atmosphere. You know, we have to change it. So we have to be healed to do it. And some people aren't healed as much as others are. Mm. And um, if you're healed, you can help. If not, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can be a beacon of light, even if you're not healed. But Every little amount of it, every large amount of it is needed. So that's what it is for us. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Ah, yeah. man, that was that was beautiful. No, I, I agree. You know, change like the change comes from a change comes from all all of us and mm. you know, what we mm. kinda what we put what we put out. Mm. Um, you know, like the the small actions or the big actions. Like, mm -hmm. you know, treat as we we founded the or i founded this channel on you know basically just treat others how you want to be treated you know oh, you put, like you treat someone nice you know they'll go treat someone nice you pay it forward yep. and mm -hmm. that whole you know was it the separation of six uh yep. or six or something like that and then yeah they mm -hmm. nice to six people and six person will be nice to you back that's right that's my mantra man if you if you if you want love you got to give it first sometimes people want <laughs> want to see it first before they give it and mm -hmm. um don't be uh always want to wanting to receive it you got to sometimes give it first if we do that the exchange will be a lot different you know it'll be it'll be a lot different so that's what kenny j is about um, loving people um putting positive music in the atmosphere for the world beautiful uh all right so uh next question is mm -hmm. um you know you've been in you've been inspired by by a lot of different genres and mm -hmm. to name a couple r and b uh gospel hip hop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and stuff like that so mm -hmm. do you still do you still listen to like to the bands and the artists of that music that inspired you then and mm -hmm. do they yeah. still inspire you now yeah um for me um 90s music r&b particularly gospel you know whatever genre you're thinking hip hop all of that stuff for me is just a part of the fabric of who i am um kind of infuse it nowadays with with today's sound but the inspiration behind my music is kind of infused positivity, gospel, R&B, hip hop, jazz, Latin, um, you know, new age, all sorts of, you know, reggae, all sorts of type of sounds inside of my music. Hopefully the goal is to kind of catch somebody's ear that's familiar with that music. Um, sometimes as artists, we can be dead, you know, center on making one style of music instead of kind of incorporating them all. Yeah. And um, as far as listeners are concerned, I think we have to be mindful that um, we want everybody to listen to our music. So we have to do our very best to to make that happen. 90s music for me 
Um, it, it, it changed my life and how I looked at music. Um, it was definitely a mark in, in my life. So I'm, I'm definitely a person that loves that genre and was heavily influenced by it. And I'll, I'll continue to go back to Belle Bib DeVoe. I continue to go back to, you know, Teddy Riley and his, all, all his productions and so on and so forth. I'm listening to jazz and all type of things. So, uh, yeah, that's the inspiration behind it. Yeah, I I agree. Your your music is uh is very is very night like very ninety sound very like mm -hmm. very sort of uh like R R and B group like it gives mm -hmm. me bigger like I, I want to say like Boys to Men and stuff like that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. because you know I was um I was listening to to You're a Woman mm -hmm. and uh like oh uh, like was it Love Love is the way I can't remember it now Love is Love is all we need Love is all we need There we go yeah. and uh. <clears throat> very very 90s but a bit i like but the bit like the bit that reminds me of the groups is when you do like your heart like the harmonies and the ad libs mm -hmm. and stuff and then so like mm -hmm. you'll come in and then you'll come in like twat like again and again and again and it's got that like, it just brings in that whole group i'm like is it I'm like am i interviewing a group or is this one guy like what's going on <laughs> like yeah and i'm just yeah. like god mate this, <clears throat> wow like yeah, yeah I like no, i like that i like that yeah, yeah no, I know the way the way you do it on both like on both tracks is oh, it's well, yeah. I appreciate it. I, that's like, um, you know, those sounds and, and 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 just the nostalgia of it and just the essence, the the atmosphere around it, it just kind of brings me back to those times where, you know, boy bands and and groups and and where you know music was at a high 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 point, and you kind of got to write with that sort of thing. And when you're on stage, of course. You need something to kind of break it up a little bit. So, you oh, know, you yeah. do your lead and you do your backgrounds, you do your lead and just have a great time. And, you know, you have the whole, you know, the whole thing. And I enjoy doing it. Everybody was, everybody looks at you, you do all of that? It's like, yeah, you do everything, every aspect about it. And that's mm -hmm. what makes it fun to me. Yeah. It looks like, um, oh, I can't remember the song, but you know, like, like Michael, Michael Jackson's done like, there was, mm -hmm. there was loads of them, wasn't he? Um, oh, yeah. I can't, I can't remember the song, He's... but I know, like, I know, um, there are videos of his, you know, of his stems. I think it was like mm -hmm. Will, Will I Am had a video yeah, and someone yeah, else. Yeah, and he's, he's just got his normal voice and he's got mm -hmm. a lower voice and he's got his higher voice, and he's just stacking yeah. them. And you're just like, did he get people? Like you're thinking he's there with you know like a like a whole band or he's nah. brought some people in and it's just yeah. him. And you're just it's oh, just him. It's that's just great. Him. Like yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. But no, nah, it was it was bit like it was beautiful you know when you come like mm -hmm. you come in and it's just like and then you've got your heart like your harmonies and you know, like the ad lib and you're like, Ooh. like you know i just <laughs> like it makes you nostalgia for you know the the blue yeah. background videos mm -hmm. and the white lights and the suits and oh mm -hmm. oh that's yeah. <laughs> it just gives me chills it's just something about it that's like sheesh Ooh, it's it's yeah. just fun to do it's fun to listen to all of those guys that that do those sorts of things i mean certainly something phenomenal and great love to go love to go live to see them and and do their thing so yeah oh yeah def definitely mm -hmm. well again it's all the nuances the nuances mm -hmm. that that make it you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. you know B billy eilish said the same thing like mm -hmm. every no one really likes doing their ad libs but you know she's a she loves the ad libs it's it's she, those it's those ad yeah. like those ad libs those those nuances things. yeah yes. that, that those make that things. make it a mm -hmm. little different yeah but yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, all right, <laughs> forget, forgive me again if I get this, get this name wrong. Um, mm -hmm. but and also as well, uh, I saw that you inspired by um, Dizzy Gillespie. That's correct. Yeah, Dizzy Gillespie. There we mm -hmm. go. I got it right. Oh, yeah, Dizzy mm -hmm. Gillespie mm -hmm. uh, and Sylvia Robinson that inspired mm -hmm. you to want to pursue music more. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it about them that you know wanted that made you want to pursue music more? Well, th those are the, the, the people that, um, you know, Dizzy Gablesi has been one of the hottest jazz artists, um, trumpeteers in his day. Um, Sylvia Robinson is being responsible for, you know, the, ushering hip hop into mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, the Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah. yeah. So those, those people lived in my town. And, you know, of course, there was others and many groups and people that, that, that shed a, a light for the community. Um, Dizzy Gillespie is being um, a guy that just not just didn't do jazz and music. You know, he was much more of a voice po po as a politician or humanitarian. I would say um, he helped just usher in so many different ideas and perspectives. He was a great guy. Um, he was a great guy on the stage, and he was a great guy off the stage. 
Um, and it just, it, it was just his story and, and how he helped our community and um, get to a point where they can listen to jazz music. He was definitely a pioneer and Sylvia Robertson, the same thing. And um, she's ushered just hip hop into the mainstream at a high, high label, level. I'm, I'm sure yeah. some would argue, you know, whether she was the person that did it, but um, yeah, there, well, yeah, there is, <laughs> there is, there, there is that yeah. big argument about it. Yeah. And whether, but, so, but for, uh, but for me, everybody plays a part into building, you know, something as great as that hip hop, um, um, genre, which from what I understand wasn't, was going to be a fad at first until it became very, very popular. So whoever, uh, had a hand at creating that genre of music, man, congratulations. Thank you so much for producing it. Thank you for so much for giving it to the air of the world so we can hear. Start, uh, start, started off in the, in the parks as the party music. And cool mm -hmm. Herc, Bambada and Flash. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. You know, yep. and then from 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 what I from what I make out, mm. I was watching. I was watching. I, oh, man, I, if you if you want to know, I don't know if you follow Drink Champs or not, but I do. I do. Grand, Grandmaster Flash, yeah. mm -hmm. his interview, something mm -hmm. special, mate. Something yeah. special. And you know, he it talks is. about uh, Sylvia Robinson, like got, starting starting the hip hop, and but you mm -hmm. know, like but they put it under they put white lines and the message under grandmaster mm. flash's name but he didn't mm. he didn't have anything to do with them mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. belly mel when it did him yeah um it's that that is the story within itself is is like you got to take a chance and, and, and i know we talk about the hip-hop you know and everything but you got to be real conscious and cool with your sound and how you give it you know don't want to be like anybody like don't have a desire to want to be like anybody I, for me i don't necessarily take style or what a person is doing i look at why they're doing it and how they're doing it in the process you know the marketing aspect of it how does your idea get to a level where everybody wants to hear it everybody wants to be a part of it you know teddy riley with the new jack swing everybody wants to do that so you want to be the author of something that's going to change culture right teddy riley changed the culture of music Sylvia Robertson changed the culture of music. And it was just not just as it necessarily music was the vehicle. The idea is the thing that made it huge. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, um, make music that's going to withstand time. That's going to be around for forever. Sylvia Robinson, as much as a controversy around who started hip hop, her name will continue to be there. Right. <laughs> so, um, that has to be important to the culture. Teddy Riley, uh, just being the, the author of the new Jack swing era, his name will always be there. Of course, there will be arguments about everybody has an opinion, opinion very similar to who's better, LeBron or, or Jordan. Everybody's going to have an opinion. It's going to be uh, error-based. Yeah, no, yeah, I was just about to say that. It all comes, yeah. that all comes down to the generation <laughs> yeah, we were born absolutely. in. You know, like when absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. like when you see people go like, Kobe, and it's like for me, it's just like, but yeah. I'm Jordan. I'm like, Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, like, it, yeah. I mean, everybody was great. And I think if we focus on being great, not who is greatest or who is mm. greater, um, God is greater. So nobody's going to exceed that. You know what I mean? As human beings, we might be better or best or who this or who that at the end of the day, man, we're just trying to get to as best as we can in our humanness. So, but yeah, and like, and, and saying that, you know, if it wasn't for Sylvia Robinson, we'd have never got like the hip, <laughs> the hop, the hip, the hippie to the hippie, hippie, hippie. don't stop the, yeah, to the focus band, on you know? that, you know, focus on that. And thanks to the artist and the, and the people <laughs> that performed the record, you know, mm. she was the business behind everything. And that was dope. You know what I mean? So congrats Definitely. to all of them. Rest in peace, Sylvia Robinson, man. Yeah, you've been you've been making music since since you were as young as as young mm -hmm. as five, you know, like mm -hmm. playing around in, in church yep. and stuff like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um and we learned many, many, <laughs> many instruments. Everybody. Like yeah. or, organ, yeah. bass, guitar, drums, piano. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh man, everything. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, which which instrument would you say is your is your go to when you first get an idea? Uh, piano. Oh, I, def I knew piano. you were going to say that. I had a feeling you were yeah. going to say that. Piano. Because <laughs> you, you have every element there. You have your you have your rhythm, you have your bass, you have your lead, you have your line chord, all of that sort of stuff. Piano is the, you know, it gives you everything just in one instrument. And um, mm -hmm. when I'm writing, um, I'll sit at the piano and um, just figure out some ideas and it, it warps. And sometimes it's rhythm. Sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll go to a rhythm. Um, and then that'll kind of drive the vibe of it to see where it's going to go. Monolic melodically, it's going to be piano. Bass player is going to come. The bass is going to come after that. Then you have your lead, which is going to give you, you know, 
the vibe it kind of makes the whole thing come together you've got you've got those many instruments on, under your belt mm-hmm. uh and you know with the with the day, with the day and age of instruments coming in the in the door and and stuff like that but is there is there another instrument like that you'd actually like to learn physically i don't know i'm sure that there's some african drum or something that i would love to just play around with um <laughs> yeah. i'm sure there you know other than the you know the normal you know everybody wants to play keyboard and bass and all that sort of stuff is i don't know you know pick the craziest and i'm sure there's instruments that i don't even know about um yep. you know what i i okay harp the playing the harp i mean the real harp looks like it could be a freaking task because oh, all yeah. of your fingers are going you know and you got to know which one to pluck so that would be probably an interesting one to try to learn and it's a beautiful sounding instrument oh. by itself and oh, I've, I I don't know if I've seen men play them, but I've seen females play them, and they wreck it completely. So it's the it's the essence of it. It's the angelic sound of it that kind of captivates me. Yeah. So yeah, it's, harp. It's, so it's, harp will be the answer to that. Yeah, it's, it's a very it's a very beautiful instrument. Yeah. Very yeah. beautiful. That mm-hmm. that you know, pi- like piano and acoustic guitar, mm. like top the, top three for me, mate. <laughs> top the three best. for me. It's all you need is that. If you can get that. You you got a winning combination that right there is so fire for mm. sure. Uh, and maybe maybe like a good sounding string as well. And you mm. know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good, you know, real sound. luscious, real off, mm. real, real, yeah. real grainy, real clear and smooth. And yeah, yeah. That was that would that would be the one. Yeah, <laughs> that would be still... the one. As you said, you said earlier about you know wanting to leave, wanting to leave something behind. You know, for the times and and the greatness and stuff like that. So. Mm. You said that uh, you wanted to be up there with the greats uh, and make an impact with your music, mm. um, but in your eyes, what does that impact look like for you? Um, the impact um, for that looks like, as an artist, I'll, I'll answer it this way. I think we are hugely responsible for the sound that's in the atmosphere. I think we can make change by the positive energy through our music that we put into the atmosphere. You know, sometimes when when we play a part into dysfunction, when we play a part into um, degrading um, people, when, when we play a part into just being so disrespectful with what we were blessed with, we kind of play into the hands of confusion. And when that happens, um, we can hold ourselves responsible for the essence and the aura, the energy that we put in the atmosphere. So um, for me, it's important that when I do music, um, I need to be responsible enough to know that I have a gift and a talent and people are going to hear me whether I want them to or not. And the, the impact that I would want is that what I put in the atmosphere is going to help correct a situation that's kind of dysfunctional. Yeah. So, um, loving women, which I believe is few and far between, you know, most of our music sometimes, puts women in a bad light to be disrespected. Um, I don't want any part of that, you know, and I, I won't be afraid to say that because I think women um, deserve um, security and us as artists, we have to make sure if we're going to use them, we should use them in a light that's going to kind of shed them or shed light on them in, as a beautiful essence, not some something that you can use and toss away when you're done with it. You know, for me, my music, I wanted to definitely be in the atmosphere um, and be a part of change, be a part of love, be a part of positivity. Will there be some raunchiness? There may be, but I don't want it to be so disrespectful where it's just going to, Mm. uh, you know, you know, just make somebody look huge, bad, you know, women and just the the essence of what my craft is, is going to really push for um um positivity and good energy it's important that we do that as artists we, we should be responsible enough to know that as artists if if, if somebody is going to listen to our music it should have an essence of trying to get them better everybody is dealing with something everybody has issues going on i don't want to be the protagonist of something bad i just want to be something that's going to make sure it makes change and it's going to help 
So I hope that answers your question. I kind of went left on it, but no, nah, no, nah, um, that's 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 yeah. fine. I mean, it kind of goes yeah. into to one of the other questions I've got. You mm -hmm. know, how, like, how do you feel about the ex the sexual exploitation of women in the media, uh, yeah. and the message that that sends to our kids? That's horrible. You know, it's it's absolutely horrible. We as Americans and 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 as countries abroad, as any anywhere, I don't care where you are and whatever side of the country you are. I don't want my kids growing up feeling. Like, that's what's in the world. I mean, I know it's there. And sometimes folks even make it seem like it's okay. And it is not okay to disrespect any human on this earth, more or less women. I, I mean, we have to be more responsible to that. I mean, our kids are growing up. So if we want to input a, a positive essence in the world, you know, we are already here. Our children are coming up. You know, they're, they're not as mature as we are. So I don't want to be immature and degrade women or whoever and my child sees me doing that and, and it, it, we're doing nothing but kind of keeping that thing that door open because we're raising up children that sees that too and think it's okay um we can't normalize dysfunction in that way we have to make sure we're responsible and pay attention to these things because that one woman that you're disrespecting in the video half dressed or whatever the case may be and i'm not saying that you're not artistic with it but there's a fine line between artist being artistic and just complete disrespect. You know what I mean? Um, you can take a photo of a woman naked and a photo um, in two sort of different vibes and see what the artistic um, yeah. mindset of it is and just total disrespect. It's just the way you look at it. You know, we have to make sure that we're going in the right, in the right direction where we're paying attention and we're being positive influence in the world, not positive influencers of stupidity and ignorance. I agree. I agree. It's, it's something like pisses me off, to be honest. Excuse my friend. Yeah, it does, yeah. It does. It does piss me off. Like you know, now, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just old. I don't know. But <laughs> no, no I'm, <laughs> but, I, I'm with you on it. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, like I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, it's it's always it's been in it's been in hip hop. It, uh, it's been in mm -hmm. pop. It's been it's, it's 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 all genres, and you know, like they they've spoken about it throughout throughout the years of music. Mm -hmm. It's it's something in there. But you know, that but now. I don't know, maybe maybe I was just kind of blind to it when I was younger, but mm -hmm. now it just it it's, it's a lot more like there in your face. I was gonna say prevalent, but I wasn't sure if that was the word. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just, it's just there in your face, like everywhere you go, especially now. You know, you like you scroll on something, and you know, there's boobs and bums and it's twer there and twerk and twerk videos, and it's just like my god, like was it was it like this or is it like has it now just become a thing? Because it's kind of like, and then you've got those videos of you know, pe like of people talk talking out about it. Like one of the videos I saw, mm -hmm. um, was a was a woman who was teaching like teaching ballet like ballet classes, mm -hmm. and you know she's saying like, um, she wants the kids to learn, you know, because they they dance to like classical music and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's like you know we want to mm -hmm. listen to it, and then she's like the kids are certain like kids like ti like tiny, mm -hmm. tinies, and uh. And he's saying like we want to listen to like so like these these newer so called I don't want to mm -hmm. I don't want to name drop but I understand the, 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 I feel the, you. the newer the newer so called artists and mm -hmm. it's just like I don't know like I don't know <laughs> I mean you know music is music but yeah as oh, you, I would... as you as you oh, sorry but as as you mm -hmm. said earlier you know like the frequencies of music and stuff mm -hmm. like that you know mm -hmm. like out like as they say our like our kids see everything that we're doing and learn and learn mm -hmm. so then it's mm -hmm. like do i really want to play that mm -hmm. you know around around my child yeah i i get it i i always I often say sometimes we got to look a little deeper it's a little more than just on the surface part of the agenda in my opinion in many cases is to perpetuate some sort of thing whatever that is i don't know i think we have to look deeper you know we have the power to create the music others have the power to put the music in mainstream so why if it's dysfunctional why is if it's putting a bad light in the world why is it even go past that point to be commercial mm -hmm. what is the agenda behind that like why is it that you know it's disrespectful you know it's degrading why do you still put it in the earth why do you still give it light you know so i won't go any further than that i would hope that our listeners will mm -hmm. will listen to that and kind of say hmm that might be another thing. Why? Why? Why is the negative energy 
accepted more than the positive energy. And I'm, I don't mean to be mystical about it, but we have to oh. understand, you know, that sometimes it's part of a bigger scheme, if you will. Um, and we have to kind of change that. We have to not necessarily not listen to it, um, but make your own decision on how you want to be. It's, that's that's the thing we have in our world. I mean, we can make decisions how we want to. We can listen to what we want to and all of that sort of stuff. But I'm not saying there's not anything wrong with it if it's if it's promoting change and it's, it's, it's promoting us getting better, I'm, I'm with it. If it's, if it's going in the opposite direction where it's going to kind of take us back. Mm -mm. Now I remember R and B music back in the day in the nineties, we talked about love. We talked yeah. about, you know, just having a great time. Of course, you know, we probably didn't use it in the right light then. Cause most of us were out, you know, doing our player thing. <laughs> um, but at least, mm -hmm. you know, we're creating, you know, we're creating the world. We, you know, we're making babies and all that sort of stuff everybody says. But um, when you get older, at some point, you know, that stuff has got to be like, man, what can I do to contribute to make this world better? You know what I'm saying? Now it's out of freaking control. It's like, yeah. I don't know where some of our wonderful artists come from with some of the content that they are allowed to push out. Like somebody, somebody signed that? Like. That doesn't say disrespect. I got daughters. I got. I have a grandson. I, there's no way. I have a son. I, there's no way that I would want that stuff in the atmosphere in the world. You know, I, I want to be a part of um, correcting it and change. And that's probably one of the reasons why I just continue to do positive music. It's just to help help the issue to be corrected. I can understand that. So you know, then that goes that goes into a another question I've got for you. Is, mm -hmm. you know, how how do you feel? You know, as as men, we can help change change that narrative yeah first we have to be changed first we have to understand that it's okay to love a woman it's okay mm. to love and not love with boundaries i think we have to be healed first as men some of us are not as healed as others and that's the energy that we that we portray we have to make sure that we heal we have to connect ourselves with people men um um that are doing it in a way where it's respectful Right. Yeah. Um, it's it's okay to have an opinion, but if your opinion is a disrespect to somebody else, that's when the if that's when your opinion is a problem, right? Um, men could start speaking up. We can start being a part of the change. We are, in my opinion, uh, the leaders of of just making change. At least as far as um, the women are concerned, we we have to be um, in it, as they say, in it to win it. We can't be a part of the problem. If we need help, if we need, you know, some sort of alternative uh, help for us to kind of get corrected and we see the problem, make the change. It's not going to come from any other place but in us. If we need to see that we need to change, we have to change. It has to be something that comes with us, comes with us first. We are, you know, the strong man. You know, we are supposed to be the one that can bear a whole lot on our shoulders and our shoulders aren't broader, you know, for no reason. You know, we are supposed to be the leaders um, and we have to lead in that fashion. Men need to stand up and um, need to, as I always say, take their rightful place in the community, in our homes, everywhere. Um, as far as musician, musicianship is concerned and artistry, um, we have to put stuff out there that's going to make a difference. So we have to be healed before we can heal anybody else no i i i i agree you know like the more conscious music and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know like edu educate like education mm -hmm. and you know help and and stuff like that is definitely mm -hmm. a, is definitely a big one you know like we're gonna we're gonna all learn from from me from each other you know mm -hmm. like this is mm -hmm. this is what i'm trying to do if you know if you yeah. if you feel this and you know take like take a bit of it and try to input if you see it's going in a mm -hmm. good light in trying to implement mm -hmm. a bit of that or if you you know you're doing something that i like i'll try right. and implement that it's kind of like in a in other businesses you know instead instead of hating the way someone does something like mm -hmm. collect like collaborate and find out how that someone does something and absolutely and learn that way because you know like i saw a there was a post about osteopaths or, or chiropractors i think you mm -hmm. can call them over mm -hmm. there Right. Um, and, you know, and he's saying like the different, all the different techniques that you can learn to, you know, crack a spine or move a, mm -hmm. move a joint and stuff. And, you know, then mm -hmm. that all goes, all the, all of those little things, you know, how you move a, a C6 vertebrae or something mm -hmm. like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's how you use, 
how you use those little like those little um like drops of knowledge and stuff like that to mm. shall we say further right further um or make the customer experience greater right you know what i, I mean? got so you. I, and yeah. yeah so i i you know and i can't i kind of believe the same the same with music you know if we're, mm. we're out there and you know we but i say that but as long as what we say in the music we also like we mm -hmm. also do in in life i mean yes. don't get me wrong there there are parts when we could That's be different true. but as long as you know we've said openly this is like mm. a con this is like part of a concept or yes you know this is a, i'm trying to still i'm telling a story so we we mm. separate that art from ourselves mm -hmm. you know so so then but yeah i get yeah, it but we're out like we're out there doing doing what we say we're doing what we're saying and, absolutely yeah that. and read like you know reinforcing that message that that's just very i was going to go to that because i think sometimes when we talk about you know different subjects and different matters and sometimes people can talk about it with a little more intellect you know we you know some folks out on the outside think that that person just arrived there <laughs> no ain't nobody perfect you know no one is going to be perfect in any situation we, mm -hmm. we need to work on it just kind of get to that level don't go out with a mindset of of dysfunction you know what i mean no one is perfect no one has just reached the level of perfection overnight you know, so I'm certainly not an individual that's going to put out in the atmosphere that I'm perfect. and I don't do anything wrong. No, but what I'm, what I, what I, uh, what I want to achieve, what I, what I kind of go after, what I'm driven to is get to the level of perfection. So we can't say you want to be perfect and just get out there and just be unhinged at everything. You know, when we say we want to be perfect, we have to work towards that. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there as I was. I'm going to add it on to what you're saying. It's very important that we not just be okay with the issues. We have yeah. to start talking about them, getting into it and try to make the change. And that's going to help our world because ultimately I don't know any artists just, I mean, I don't, let me change that. I was about to say, I don't know any artist that does it just for the money, but mm. most times artists do it for the money. You have to have a passion for what you do, not just for the money. Yeah. It has to be something else that kind of drives you. And for me, my driving is um, trying to get correction and trying to help the world and the earth be better. Yeah. Well, well again, that kind of um, two, like, two, two things, two things. Um, you know, you say you say about art, art, this one in the one in the money, but then that also, but I can't remember who it was, but I heard it somewhere. You know, the what the ones that are in it for the money mm -hmm. won't last long mm -hmm. because there's not Very like. True. You know, it's it's just like oh, okay, like because if you're getting for the money, you're basically, I mean, okay, they they say follow like follow some trends in order to get your net, like your foot mm -hmm. in the door, mm -hmm. but then it's just like you know we we see we see that, going back to the message in the videos of you know like the, mm -hmm. the prop money and the rented Lambos and mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and we think oh, I, I, God, I want that, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, we we get into it and we start doing the whatever's whatever's the latest trend, mm -hmm. and then eventually it's just like. Uh, people who cotton on you're a bit of a one trick pony mm -hmm. um like many many of the greats and, mm -hmm. and many others you know they the music came later mm -hmm. it was it was the mute like it was the passion for expressing themselves mm -hmm. and and telling their story that you know helped them to help them to grow help them to move forward and you know someone thought oh do you know what i really like what this person's doing that like now let's offer him money or mm -hmm. her money so that you know they can they haven't got to worry about going to work or, you know, like whether they're going to make rent or something. We're just going to give them, we're going to give them the money and then they can go and pursue their art, their passion and tell, and tell the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then that leads me into the second thing is because for, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about you, but for me, when, when we, when we do music and we, you know, we're writing down our thoughts with like, we're journaling. You know what I mean? We're we're just, right. we're, we're journaling mm -hmm. in a to a like to a rhythmic pattern, mm -hmm. um over fre over frequencies. But that, again, that's a that's a deeper level if you like if you go into right. frequencies and all that. But right. you know, we're we're rhythmically journaling mm -hmm. the world, our message, and mm -hmm. I've like and you can cut you you know you can kind of see it with like like Jay like Jay Z or you know Kanye mm -hmm. West and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You you go to like college dropout and you hear you hear early kanye and, mm. and you see the you see the way that he's produced yes. as, a, as a producer yes. and yeah 
and and Jay Z, you know, from where he was doing the stuff in the streets, then you know now he's mm. now he's CEO. His mm. like his discography is his mm -hmm. his climb his climbing of the ladder. His journ he's journaled his way up, mm -hmm. and and that's that's how I that's how I see it. You know, we yeah. We may start late, and you know we may have to catch up with things. Like mm -hmm. two albums might be what we did, what we did younger. Your third album mm -hmm. might be, you know, I've got I've got skin in the game now. Let's do mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Fourth is you, you know, elevating, right. Elevate, like, right, and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah it you see the you see the transition between both of those artists you you're talking about, like mm -hmm. like uh, the latter. You, you you can't when you get to that level, you know, talk about stuff that you did when you first started in your career, like because. It's, you can't even even relate to that anymore. Mm, um, so yeah, you're not in that I, element, yeah. No, it's like it would be idiotic of him to be at that <laughs> level and then still talk about that. It's like, I, I mean, it's good, you know, as a music lover to see the transition with between these artists, and it's, I guess, it's okay to have, you know, talk about some things and trying to put some of that stuff up. But at some point, you can't keep talking about the same thing. At some point, you have to grow. You have to evolve into something else. I wouldn't look at him the same or either of those artists. You can, you can see on both of those artists two distinct dif differences. You see the climb, you see the healed individual, and the other one, you, you'll see some other thing, you know, and you have to see, like, man, what is going on with that? And it has to be something connected to something else. You know, God bless him. I hope it works out for him. Um, I was going to say this. I was talk thinking about this. It's like um, it was a saying, your character will carry you where your talent won't. So the characters of these individuals, as they put, as they evolve in their life, it took them somewhere. I don't know if it's necessarily their talent. You know, their talent yeah. kind of made people look at them. But how do you get to those higher levels? Is going to be how, who you are, and, and and you'll see, you see, you pay attention to see where one is and where one it will is not. And and I think we have to always look at those nuances and, and not just be, oh, they do great music. Okay, let's see the character of those individuals and see how they're evolving. Um, yeah, what what is it about see, them that makes them them? Yeah, yeah, and it's great to, you know, that's why these interviews, these sorts of things, is important because uh, the listeners are, will get an opportunity to see not just um, "Love Is All We Need" or "You're a Woman." They'll understand the why I, I I'm I'm here and um I I fit better in these situations, you know, where I'm able to speak freely and speak you know consciously about the things that are passionate to me and for me as we uh you know talk about you know degrading you know women and all that sort of stuff it's important to me that i'll put forth that essence in the world where it's kind of making change and it's making um a difference you know i, I can't do the other stuff in good consciousness it just won't it's not going to be a part of me um i think that is forced even on them to some degree yeah. uh, because of their influence in the, in in social media uh, in the social realm and we have to look at the bigger picture and see what it's really trying to do what are they really trying to do because i don't i don't have the capital to push that stuff in the in, in the world you know yeah. they push it in the world it becomes popular and it's like it's contagious and everybody's like yay this is dope but it really isn't it's almost, it's almost kind of like how far how far can we push boundaries i mean yeah we, yeah you know i remember yeah. like it's a, it's a different example but i remember you know, when i was a kid I remember, I remember, my, like, I'm not very good with horror movies, but I remember, mm -hmm. um, remember asking my dad about The Exorcist mm -hmm. and, you know, this, ca this came out in the, uh, in the eighties. It was, mm -hmm. I think he said it was banned like three times in the cinema yep. because of, you know, because of what it was doing to people. Yeah. Um, but you know, now, but now, you know, The Exorcist, like some people consider it very tame and it's like, it, you know, it shows the, like the more you can, the more you can push the more you can push that boundary, whether it's a big bit or a little bit, we we desens desensitize. That's the word mm -hmm. I'm looking for. We desensitize exactly. to to a lot Absolutely. of what's pushed. That's right. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. We are desensitized to to what reality is. No one. Let's just take relationships. No one to be want to be in a relationship where they're not loved. No one wants to be in a relationship where they're disrespected. You know how could we think that that's normal? to be in a situation and not be loved, you know? So they create this sort of dysfunction and they normalize it. And it's just like, thought you were supposed to be in a relationship to be loved, but mm -hmm. we just have to see these sorts of nuances in our world, in our music landscape, that'll give us a way to kind of navigate our life and listen to what you want to. There's enough out there to choose from.
but you know, don't inundate your spirit with a bunch of negative energy. You know, I, I guess uh, you have a positive and a negative, you know, that kind of balances out and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying to always listen to one thing or the other. Just kind of be balanced in what you listen to. You know, so nowadays it's like crazy all day long, every day, and it's less love and it's all crazy. So I want to be a part of the of the positive, not necessarily the negative, though. Another another one I'm going to go on, bit of a, a kind, kind of a bit of a switch, like bit of a mm -hmm. full yeah. Full circle moment, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but it's one, it's one I definitely, definitely want to hear. Is uh, so you know, some some of your favorite moments in music have been how people, uh, you know, people respond to your respond to your music. But mm -hmm. what are you know, what are some of the responses you've you've got from from your listeners? Oh well, they enjoy uh, the the honesty. They enjoy the transparency. Uh, they enjoy the positivity, and they can see it on every on every spectrum. So I'm just not doing music for, for secular listeners. I'm doing music for everybody. You know what I mean? So I want children to hear it. And they said, well, my kid can listen to this. Yeah. You know, my daughter can listen to this. Yeah. You know, my wife can enjoy this. You know, I love this. This is helping me, you know, that sort of thing, you know, makes what I do. So, so, so much love. I, I enjoy that. The responses I've been getting about it is like, man, that is, we need this in our world. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. And that's what makes the difference to me. Turning up and I mean, I'm not saying you're not supposed to turn up. I'm not saying you're not supposed <laughs> to have fun. <laughs> but at some point, you just got to be like, hey, okay, let me let me live as no normal. Let me go on this normal path right here and hear something that's really like, okay, that's really dope. So I get, I don't get anybody that don't like it. Yeah. Um, more or less, I get people that really enjoy it and kind of looking for more. Like a, like a, a ref refreshing. Yeah. They, yeah, they love yeah. it. It's like, oh, man, that's really good. We need to hear this loud. I mean, I can't. I want my music to be heard in air, in arenas that kind of make a difference. Yeah. You know, let me be a part of something, some campaign, some, you know, some idea, some world that appreciates that and is trying to, trying to get change in the world. You know, I, I can't hear some of this stuff in mainstream. They'll let it go to some degree. But, you know, I, I, I would like to be considered as somebody that's part of the change and uh, listeners really enjoy the music in that way again uh so so to go to your to your song you know your mm -hmm. your new song your you're a woman which are mm -hmm. which you're releasing or which comes out may march 8th march 8th yeah yeah international yep. women's day mm -hmm. um so yeah you know what what was it that inspired you to to write that song um what we talked about earlier, the, the level of disrespect that we see um, coming from our music, this music here was designed, this piece here was designed specifically for women to know that we appreciate them. I don't know too many songs. I'm sure they're out there. I don't really had hadn't heard too many of them. That really speaks specifically to a woman to appreciate her for all that she has contributed in the earth. You know, I always say, mm. often say that I wouldn't be here without a, a woman. You know, a woman is responsible for populating the earth. You know, yeah. that essence of femininity is necessary. And I felt that we needed to make, we need to shed some light on it and we need to hear it and we need to make sure that we s scream it loud, you know, mm -hmm. so they need to be appreciated. It's time out for just disrespect. So I wanted to be, again, a part of the, about a, the change as opposed to the problem. So they needed to hear it, in my opinion. And I, I hope that they take hold of it and women are very resilient. Women are very strong. Women, I'm going to put a post up later. It talks about if you want something done right, you're going to have to get a woman. If you want it to work, <laughs> yep. women are probably some of the biggest consumers. You know, men don't buy too much of anything. Women are going to you know, support you. Women are going to do any and everything they can for a cause that they love. Yeah. And I thought it was necessary to kind of put in the atmosphere uh, from an artist's perspective, yo, let me let me big them up. Let me let me let me root them on and say, yo, y'all doing your thing, and I appreciate y'all. So that's what this song derived from. There was a talk we did with another artist um, mm -hmm. as well, um, Frank Nitty or N Nitty Ice, um, and he and no, he he's you know he said the same thing in 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 his chat that you know women women are the big like are the biggest consumers. You know they'll. As you say, they'll they'll support you in in whatever you do. You know, he yep. he said if he if he wants to 
if there's anyone he he wants to get, it's you know the women because if they mm-hmm. if they believe in something, mm-hmm. like they they got no problem with being like, yep, bosh, there you go. Yeah. So that's yeah, right. He 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 uh right. he yeah he said he said that he said that as well. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's definitely definitely one of the things and and women as well. Like you know if it like if it wasn't if it wasn't for a for a woman like my my ex like my ex girlfriend like we're mm-hmm. we're still very like we're still very good friends and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing this. You know, I was mm-hmm. very I was very shy. I was very like mm-hmm. I don't know if I can do this. And mm-hmm. Like, and you yeah. know, it was about going. I didn't believe in myself enough to go to to go to university to learn production, which then got me into this. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you know, if it was and if it wasn't for her, you know, sitting with me and understand like understanding my thoughts, my like my negatives, my positives, my doubts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, she was just like, oh, I got you, I got you. So yeah, you know, so she like. She's just like, let's just do it. Like, let's just take it mm-hmm. day by day. And bosh, and you know, like, for her, for her doing that, and you know, supporting me and mm. giving me the the positive feedback that I needed in order to move forward. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah. So, and, man, I no, I, I I totally agree with you. It's like, you know, every yeah. every every man needs a strong woman. I believe is yeah. what they say, don't they? So, Absolutely, they do, and it's important. And if you want to be successful, I'm not saying it's just solely responsible. Of a woman to do, then mm. we hold uh, a responsibility. Oh, no, it, go, it, goes, to, it goes both ways goes as both well. Ways. You, know, don't, you can't absolutely. You can't just expect the woman to hold. You know, some, sometimes uh, your yeah, the woman may be down, and then it's our right. it's our job to you know to nurture them like they nurtured us. Yeah, and it's it's hard sometimes for men to hear that because we think we're the dominant ones. <laughs> but and although that may be true in some cases, but I think it 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 needs both. <laughs> it needs again. That positive, that negative, or that negative, or that positive, po- uh, positive to get in the balance. I think once we understand that, and know what the role is, you know, she is there to help. And by God, I don't care how much you tell her not to help, <laughs> she's going to help. Yeah, just stop yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't care. That's just a part of their nature. That's a part of what they what their makeup is. They were created in the eyes in the in, in the eyes of our God to to help. Mm. They were there to help, and you cannot tell a helper not to help. They're going to help, and they don't even know they're helping. It's just even if they're angry, even if they're mad, they're going to still help. It's just a part of who they are, and this song just speaks to them. You're a woman. I'm going to remind them, and I know they know they are, but you know sometimes we don't hear it from us a lot. They don't hear it from us a lot. They don't hear the appreciation for us a lot. For me, let me appreciate them. Let me appreciate them. Yeah, no, I I understand. We're not very not very vocal in uh in that sense mm-hmm. but i think yeah, yeah i think that kind of bounds yeah. down to to some to, to, like not everyone's but some sums up bringing you know like we're taught to be a man and, and a man can't do this and a man can't do that but mm-hmm. it is if you if you take like mental health for example like that was a big taboo mm-hmm. big taboo and you know mm-hmm. now but if you look at how it's grown now it's you know it's becoming more more accepted and you know we're mm-hmm. we're, we're now more open to talk about it rather than having to write about it sort of thing. Mm-hmm. yeah and uh, ah, and another, another thing as well mm-hmm. um you know your your song you're a woman also also did remind do you uh do you know two pucks uh keep your head up mm-hmm. yeah it remind it reminded me a, mm-hmm. a lot of that as well because you know, so uh, i had to <laughs> i had to i had to copy the copy the lyrics for it but yeah. Um, you know, since we all came from a woman, got our name from a woman, our game from mm-hmm. a woman, I wonder mm-hmm. why we take from a woman, why we, uh, the R right. word, our women, right. do we right. hate our women? Mm-hmm. I think we killed our women. And, you know, and it's, and mm-hmm. it's that, and it was kind of, I was I'm sitting there like, oh, he's it's kind of changing me a lot of that. Ah, yeah. it's, it's changing. I, that, that brought me chills. I never even thought about that, that song. Um, but yeah, that, that essence right there, that is, that's earth to me. That's just the foundation of, I ain't saying, I always go back to, man, my existence on this earth, she bore me, my mom bore me. She, she carried me for nine months and she delivered me. I don't, I don't think a man could ever do that. I mean, I mean, I've saw <laughs> all of my children born and it's like, I don't even know if a man could ever deal with that. But mm. for them to just be the nurturers of us, and I, you you have to think that that deserves some honor, because without their existence, we would not exist. We would not be born. <laughs> they they chose to keep us. They chose to, to to nurture us and get us on this earth. 
it's just our right as men to just love on them and and enjoy them and adore them for their great work as well and you know, it shows a it shows a lot for for their nature as well Cause, you know to cat like <laughs> To carry some like to carry something that well again depends on the height on the height and weight of your baby, but like, yeah, babies yeah, are yeah. pretty big things. Yeah, and it's a, uh, and yeah. for them, you know, like they they destroy heart like they destroy a lot of their bodies. Like there's a lot of bones breaking yeah. in order to give, but well, shall yeah, we say, moving, give birth a natural way. Moving out of the way, you know what I mean? Talking, yeah, I, so, I don't, I haven't so even for, did the research. For someone to do that, that's. You know, yeah, it's a, a lot. It's a, t a t testament it's to their to their love for you as well. You know what I mean? It's exactly. Like, you know, exactly. I'm willing to give up, give up my or to break some bones, like. Yeah, this. but that is what it is for us, man. We gotta appreciate. We gotta appreciate that, not just for the birth uh, thing, but just in in general. They're just beautiful specimens. They they help. They do what they do, and sometimes you would have to think most of the successes that us men have. Ain't because if we did it on our own. We had a great helper and a great support system behind us. And more than likely, most times, it's because of a woman. Okay, so another another question for you. Um, mm. uh, who are some of your favorite female role models? Um, I like Michelle Obama. Um, yeah. I, I like, um, I forget her first name, Hillary Clinton. As much as people say they don't like her in Sometimes you got to take the positive more or less the negative out. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think of some that can kind of catch everybody. But um, if I was to pick one, the class and the essence that Michelle Obama had in office was exquisite. I enjoyed um, seeing that because I can relate to um, a black woman being phenomenal, not to put her up against Hillary Clinton, but there's just distinct yeah. difference. <laughs> Mm. Uh, but Michelle, but Michelle Obama, I, I would say is um is in a class by herself when it comes to um having class in such a prestigious office. Um, that is, uh, you're a woman. That's that her strength, her power, all of that sort of stuff is is something to be reckoned with. So yeah, yeah. I agree. I can I can agree with that. You know, like especially with um Barack was the first black president. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm -hmm. One, he was, he was like him himself was under a lot of, a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, the first as well, everyone was kind mm -hmm. of expecting that, like, was almost waiting for him to, to yeah. drop something. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I, I agree the, the yeah. way that, you know, that she, she held him down. Uh, yeah. And she was able to, to come across to, you know, all the different communities and, and, you know, bring and kind of bring everyone together. Yeah. Like, so, to, to be in such an office. And to hold your man down, I'm sure as a president, you know, there's just so many things coming your way. Yeah. And I won't get into specifics. If uh, you just think with your with your mind. Yeah, well, with, with such, with, it's it's like almost like royalty, isn't it? You know, with such it with is. such a high level. Yeah, and you can imagine everything coming his way, but she, as the the strong woman that she is, she she she's there taking care of whatever she's got to take care of, supporting him. I don't know the specifics of what the behind the scenes are, but yeah, yeah. just think, you know, you have to imagine to think that they, I'm sure it was crazy things, but she's there holding him down. And, you know, she's the epitome of, 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 of a woman in high regard that held or stood next to one of the most prestigious offices in the world that comes with a level of strength all by itself. And for her to kill it like that is, is just crazy. She still yeah. kept her class, still looks phenomenal. And still doing her thing, and that's just that's just really dope. Yeah. And as and you know, as well as no, you know, no, knowing your husband was the like was the first man in history yeah. to to do that yeah. as well. So you know, and, and yeah. your name, your like your name as well as his will go down in history. Yeah, and, and they had yeah. and they had the two like the two girls growing up as well. Like, yeah, and, and there you, know you go. I mean? It's it's like so yeah, you're a, you're a le you're a leader and you're a mother at the same time, like. <laughs> yeah, it, with influence, a high level of influence, and that's 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 crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, those are those. Are, that's my pick. Let me just stick with that one. Great pick. Great pick. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so random, random, more light-hearted question for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you like going back, going back to going back to music, uh, if you could collaborate with anyone, who would it be? 
and it could be dead or alive. Or you can do dead or alive as two separate artists. Okay, so Rodney Jerkins is a much so much of a producer that I would love to work with. Um, he's still living. Marvin Gaye is the one yeah. that I would love to work with. Um, I'll stick with those two because I can go on and on and on. And on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, but I, yeah, I, I, of course well, there's of course there's many of them. I, I've already mentioned Teddy Riley and mm. his uh, New Jack New Jack Swing, but Rodney Jerkins, uh, it, I, obviously, I mean he's a he's a, a guy after Teddy Riley's own heart, if you will, if you know the story. Uh, so yeah, Rodney Jerkins and um, yeah Marvin Gaye, yeah those are because the Marvin Gaye has that smooth that smooth thing that that and, that, that that thing about him that yeah, that's just that. like. It's contagious. incredible voice. <laughs> yeah, that thing um, is phenomenal. Even, but yeah, those two. Yeah, like when you when you hear the videos of you know where people have just kind of isolated his vocals. This is nice. It's and sometimes it's just it's the simplicity of it and the pureness mm. of it. You can hear it in them. And, yeah, like and that's what it is. There's a there's the video of um of him singing through the like through the grapevine. Mm -hmm. And you and. It's just oh my god, mm. <laughs> oh, oh my god, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. and again, and a, and, a, and another, um, you know, one of, one of my favorite songs from him is Inner City Blues. Mm -hmm. Like, I love, man, I love that record. <sighs> love that I, record. I, I love all of that stuff so much. Like all of those, you know, they didn't have CD. I put, I got, I want rec. I want the vinyl. Yeah. So I, I wanted the vinyl gen just to hear the raw grit of of that. And <laughs> yeah, I love the as an engineer and the and the person that loves a good mix sound. Those records there, oh, it, it's different mixing on a on an ADAT than it is a two inch reel. That I mean, that two inch reel is it just has something different to it. You know, it's of course it, it's bulky and it's a whole bunch of other stuff you got to add to it. But man. Mixing on that and getting the sound out of that thing is whew. so. Man, I love those records, man. So yeah, well, yeah. it's that that Motown magic, isn't it? You know what I mean. But like they Motown magic, you got they, it. They created a, they created a whole thing in themselves, and yeah, yeah, obviously. incredible. And as well, like vinyl, you've got the mm. you've got the you've got their voice and the instrumentation and how they mixed it as well. But then you get that, mm. and then you get that little crackle of that, that little of the, of the oh that, uh, oh. that is. <laughs> That is what, you know, you know, kids are like, ah, it's a record. Ah, it doesn't sound good. No, 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 no. You don't have no idea. Those were, ah, those were, those were some great mixed records. And um, from mm -hmm. what they used it for and for how they got the sound out of their, their pieces, I mean, yeah. couldn't ask for nothing better. Yeah, you know? to, you know, to mix, to mix something that way and just to mix it at home mm -hmm. in your basement. mm like mm. it, oh that's you're you basically just pioneered everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know I mean? no, yeah. incredible and i've like and then if you look at like like uh, if you like lo-fi music as well it's mm -hmm. you know, I, I really I, that kind of mm -hmm. reminds me a lot of it as well you know yeah I, I, but I, that's probably just you know the the bit little bit of bit crusher yeah. and, and stuff on yeah. you giving it that crackle yeah. but yeah, yeah. It, oh just there's something about that yeah man. there's something about that <laughs> yeah but uh um yeah so la last question would mm -hmm. be um for anyone looking to get into music what would your advice be okay i heard this uh advice i, I don't call names never do you know, kind. from 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 this perspective you know when you're writing music you know mm. sometimes it's very important to write music um not because everybody else is doing it um you have to be so clean and, and so pure and so honest with your craft that you're doing it for you first when you're doing yeah. it for you first if you feel something from that record first it will only translate into something for someone else you know if it's not pure it's not clear to you best thing to do is to hold on to it until it gets clear then once it's clear um you'll be able to see why it's so important you know so he said you know write music for you he said, sit home and write it and, and enjoy it first. And then you don't write it for the audience. You write it for you. And then you're getting the audience in on what the feeling you felt. And, and hopefully it'll get contagious. Sometimes we get it 
twisted, such as I did at a young age, you know, coming up and doing music, we do it for the listener. And if we do it for the listener, nine out of 10 times, it probably fizzle out. If we do it for ourselves, um, and not selfishly for ourselves, if we do it with a, with an intent of trying to, you know, be cool with it and vibe with it, you know, somebody's going to gravitate towards it. Just don't yeah. do it for some other reason that doesn't have to do with you first. The first has to be something that you hear, that you can interpret, that you can enjoy. And you might even get healing from it. And that thing, put it out and you see what the response is. That's how I write now. I don't write from a perspective of trying to see who's going to like it first. No, I got to vibe with it. Once I vibe with it and it's something that's kicking and knocking my head off, it'll 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 do the same thing when it translates in the world. Yep. So do that, artists. Don't, don't do the latter. Do, do that. Do it for you first. And hopefully like somebody that. will like it on the outside. I think I no, it's a... I think Rick Rubin was the mm. was the guy. That's exactly who it was. I don't want to call his name, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. you said it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it. So I I keep my ears. I keep it open. And, you know, though Rick Rubin is probably one of you wouldn't even like some of us wouldn't even know what type of records he was involved with. Uh, most of your hip hop great records. Def, who was it? Yeah, Def Sorry, Jam. Def Jam. Def yeah. Jam. Yeah, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't fit like. It, you, it, you wouldn't think to look at him. Like, no, you, you would think, not think like, to think pretty big rock star or something. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. he's I mean, a guy that that Jay Z's craziest hits were, yeah. were were produced and written. He put no. that stank on it, boy. Whew. <laughs> yeah, and the, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that you know he he op openly said he doesn't he doesn't produce. Yeah, he doesn't. He's, yeah, he he just said you know like I've got it because as you know as you said he. He allowed, like he allowed a safe space for people to come and pursue mm -hmm. what they wanted to do with no judgment. And right. you know, as you said, sit like sit on the records until you feel something. You know, he's right. like, allowing the people, as we say, the state, the safe space to do what mm -hmm. they wanted to do and, yep. and reflect on how they felt before it went out. And mm -hmm. you know, so when that's what when did. that's what made his and as you said earlier, that's what that's what made his character. Yeah, that that's yeah. what allowed him to to get some of these amazing amazing artists and amazing records or amazing records out of some of these artists that's right that's right that's right so big shout out to rick rubin yep shout out rick rubin yeah, salute man for yeah. sure okay so um you know you've got um <clears throat> you're a woman dropping march 8th on mm -hmm. international uh yep. ladies day um mm -hmm. is there is there anything else you you've got coming up or you want to or you want to say about yeah, I, I'm summertime. I got a full length uh, album coming, um, which is going to kind of encompass some more music, um, good sound, good vibe, um, just putting out good atmosphere, good music in the atmosphere. Um, and I'm I'm getting out to do some touring, and um, and um, hopefully I'll be in the UK at some point. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, you never know, mate. You never know. Never know. Hopefully, you never fingers know. crossed. You never know. Fingers crossed. No, that'd be that'd be good. That'd yeah. be good. Um, yeah. Um, so do you want to tell the tell the world where they can find you? Yeah, you can see me on all digital platforms. Um, let's run them down. So you got TikTok. It's Kenny J Wilkins, the number seven. You'll see some content there. I have Instagram with Kenny Wilkins. I have Facebook with Kenny J Wilkins, and another Facebook with Kenny J. All of them. Um, have content on them that you will probably hopefully enjoy. Um, follow me there, you know, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. I got a website coming out, um, Kenny J Music. Keep an eye out for that. And my um, YouTube channel, <laughs> just pray for me on that. I, uh, it's going to be um, uh, Kenny J Music channel, I believe it is, uh, Kenny Wilkins channel, something like that. I'm sure yeah. you can find I've done – Covers with uh for all of me, which is a John Legend yep. classic song. I did a ribbon in the sky there. Um, have some other content. There's so many different things I'm trying to do. Um, just trying to keep putting my sound out in the atmosphere and create change. So look me up, hit me up. <laughs> Let's talk. Beautiful. All right, all right, people. That's uh, that's us. Been a oh, been an amazing little chat. Thank been you, an man. amazing chat it, for sure. Um, had a good time. Yeah, with singer, songwriter, and producer Kenny J. So, My take man. it easy, people. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you all soon. Peace. <laughs>